Good day to you. My name is Logan Richards and this is Travis Tessier. We welcome you to Batoche National Historic Site. Bonjour, je m'appelle Travis Tessier et voici Logan Richards. Nous vous souhaitons la bienvenue au lieu historique national de Batoche. We honor the land the site is on, homeland of the Métis and part of Indigenous Treaty 6 territory. Nous honorons la terre sur laquelle se trouve le site. La patrie des Métis est partie du territoire autochtone du Traité 6. Come celebrate summer with us. We have plenty of new exhibits, features, and programs at Batoche. Venez célébrer l'été avec nous. Nous offrons plein de nouveaux programmes, fonctionnalités et expositions à Batoche. And now for the music of the talented Phil and Dallas Boyer. Et maintenant pour la musique des talentueux Phil et Dallas Boyer. It's so wonderful to be back at the homeland of Batash to play some music for you all. We hope you enjoyed what you hear today and uh, we say thank you once again. First song we'll play is a song called Big John. This uh, goes back to many festivals and uh, one that we play just down the road here each year except for the past couple of years at the Batash Festival. Big John McNeil goes like this.
back in the days for many festivals, house parties and whatnot. To the old me. Well, we're gonna do a French song. This song was uh, done by Louise Lu Lucille Starr many years ago. She's a Manitobian lady who passed away just recently. She made this song famous, and uh, a lot of people love to hear this song, especially at a function, a festival function, by the Métis people. It's called the French song. Goes a little like this. Quand le soleil bronze en montagne et que song, good old Lucille Star song. A lot of people sing that. A lot of male singers sing it. And uh, yeah, it's a nice tune. I think we just learned that one last, last year, eh? Yeah. <coughs> All right, Dallas. Yeah. You want to explain it off, Randy? <laughs> uh, I, I yeah, it's an old tune that a lot of people uh, dance it. If you got too many dances, I think it goes on forever, eh? Sometimes they had to have two fiddle players play this tune if there was uh, more than, I think, eight couples. Here's our version of the Drops of Brandy.
best part of these. Oh, yeah. yeah, where they used to kick all the furniture out of the, the, the room in the kitchen in the living room, throw it outside and just fill the fill the floor with dance feet. You wanna do a two year old from Maya? Dallas has a little girl. His name her name is Maya. I'm sure a lot of people know her on Facebook land. But he wrote this tune for her. It's called Maya's Waltz and a lot of people fell in love with this song. And it goes a little like this. Maya's Waltz. to the music of the old fiddle. Here's a swing though, let's see if they can swing to this.
see if anybody was swinging behind us. So that would be so awesome to see. This next tune we're gonna play is this tune called Whiskey Before Breakfast. Back in the day when there was a lot of children running around, they used to say it was called Spirits Before Dawn. We have the honor and privilege of playing for a lot of school, a few square dance groups that we play regularly with. The Creeland dancers out of Saskatoon, or Beardies, I should say, just uh, west of us here, then? That way, anyways. Cross, cross the river that way. And then the Fort, uh, the Coppell Valley square dancers, eh? By Regina, right? By Regina. Those are the two groups that we play for mostly in the summer. And uh, it's a lot of fun if you ever get a chance to come out and see that when you hear them around. In. And uh, we're going to end off with a little bit of the Orange Blossom special. Yeah. Huh? Two, two rounds? Okay. We'll do two rounds of the Orange Blossom special. And we'd like to say thank you once again to Batash National Park here.
Joy England Music today. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my son Dallas and myself, we say God bless and stay safe. We are pleased to host a beautiful local art project. The Sewing Circle presents their octopus bag. Nous sommes heureux d'accueillir un beau projet d'art local. Le cercle de couture présente leur sac de pieuvre. I'm Kathy Putin and Sell. Um, I have a long historic Métis history through the Pruden line, the Boucher, West Bronx, and Gagnon. Um, I am a member of Gabriel Dumont Local 11. I was previously the president. I recently won the regional director election, so just taking on a, a little bit of a new role. Um, learning lots about my culture. I've never had the opportunity actually do any craft work um, that involves maybe specific tradition. And uh, last winter I did the moccasin making and uh, I always have to be different I think but I really am obsessed with embroidery. I tried the beading and it wasn't my thing but the embroidery I really liked. Um, I find it really relaxing and kind of calming. Um, the octopus bag itself was very challenging, <laughs> very time-consuming. Um, Greg Gregory Schofield was our instructor, and he's just an amazing man. His passion and love for the historic um, garments and treasures and the stories behind um, really helped us each create our own story and our own medicine inside the bag and outside. Uh, I chose to do embroidery on mine and I'm very, very passionate about Norway house style uh, embroidery and so I tried it for the very first time on my bag. I have ancestors that actually derived from Norway house five generations back and so I don't know if that's my grandmother's kind of putting that in there but it was very fulfilling actually doing it. There were very many long nights of ripping things out uh, during the lo long learning process, but in the end, we really encouraged each other. We met on Saturdays and beaded or embroidery together to encourage each other, don't give up. And, you know, we discussed our colors. I chose things that mean something to me. I used the Saskatoon berry flower. Um, which are the white flowers and then the Norway house pink flower in the middle. I also use Saskatoons and gooseberries because as a kid I loved them and knew they were sour every time you take that first bite but um, I just thought the milky green color in them was very unique and very Saskatchewan so I used those and yeah it's just been a great honor, a great experience and yes I plan on making Wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Um, so I did notice yours is, is embroidery, right? It's not beadwork. And yeah. you mentioned that's, is, is that be, uh, from the Norway house? Is that more related to that area? Uh, the pink flower is. Yeah. They have a certain style where, um, I'm not positive it's called a blanket stitch, but something like that, where it's filled and filled and filled and so that it almost comes becomes 3D and um, and solid and it was very time consuming and meticulous because if you have one thing out the rest of it looks out so um, so yeah that was that was in honor of my great 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 grandmother yeah we did all our classes on zoom Gregory taught us um, usually about every six weeks we met together with him and would go the next step then he'd give us a whole bunch of homework and we'd go on to the next step but in between on Saturdays at one o'clock we'd all meet for Zoom, have tea, visit and do our beading and embroidering and kind of encourage and get you know little tricks from people uh, even the embroiderer people were or the beading people were also using an embroidery hoop to keep it flatter so it wasn't puckering, yeah. So it was lots of learning, yeah. Um, my name is Kim Belkimer. I live in Regina and 
I was made an honorary member of GDI Local or GD Local 11 for the purpose of this project. I felt very, very honored to be part of this project. Uh, the way that Gregory Schofield framed it, framed it as an heirloom piece uh, really put pressure on us. And uh, I redid my design several times. I ripped out group lead work that I'd spent many hours on, which I'd never done before. But the, uh, the implications of making an heirloom piece for my family uh, really made me pause and think about the intentions behind the, the work and uh, what message I wanted to provide for future generations. So uh, my design, uh, I don't read it. I don't have a lot to say about it. Um, these purple flowers here are my interpretation of the crocus flower, which we have, uh, they're plentiful on Treaty 4 territory, and uh, that was something I wanted to include. Some of the other floral designs um, I had taken from uh, templates in a book that was written by Gregory Schofield and Amy Riley about ATV work. So those are traditional. And um, the other ones were just little interesting embellishments that I could see on uh, other Métis octopus bags that Gregory had showed us from his personal collection. So we had uh, meetings every Saturday. We had meetings that were reserved for instruction, where Gregory would provide uh, instruction, and then there were other times where we just met as a group, as a, a meeting circle, a virtual meeting circle. And, you know, it was so fun to get to know people, even um, in spite of the pandemic, we were making these connections in our community. Some of these folks I had never met before, and uh, to meet them online, and then today to have the, the privilege to meet in person. Um, it just is just overwhelming, and I, my heart is very full today. Tom Shikiwa, Lila Phillips, the Shinnecock Fashion, Bill Oshchin, Maga Mekwak, Saskatoon, and Indian. Hello, everybody, I'm Lila Phillips. I'm originally from Rokenville, but now I live in Saskatoon. Um, I'm a member of Gabriel Dumont Local 11. Um, the group helped set up the, the awesome teachings from Gregory School Field yeah. behind the author this way. Um, it was a wonderful project. Uh, I I did not complete my author this day. There was lots of work um, that went into feeding, um, stitching, sewing, designing, um, and just having the time and the, the space for the thoughtful process behind the, the octopus bag uh, as a heirloom piece for our, our, our families today. Um, yeah, so I was, I'm very grateful, honored and um, thankful that I got to learn from Gregory Schofield and connect with community members in Saskatoon um, and surrounding area of, of our Métis and Mitchell community to learn um, through and with them about the octopus bag. I am on the finishing steps of the octopus bag. I need to um, do some tassels. Uh, the braided, the braided, uh, this braid, <laughs> um, and put it all together. Uh, and then get it in an exhibit just like this. Hopefully, I'll be working on it more this summer now that I have some more time and that the school year is done. Uh, Ashley Shaw, Dishna Kashin, Prince Albert, the weekend, Saskatoon, Doshkin. My name is Ashley, I'm from Prince Albert, but I live in Saskatoon. Um, I decided to um, be a part of this project because I've always enjoyed feeding and sewing. Um, it's just nice to do something like this because it kind of elevated the process. I've never been part of a project this to this extent before. Uh, most of my beating projects are things that I can do over the weekend, and this was a Quite a journey, <laughs> a couple months in the making. So, um, the design I didn't really choose. It just kind of, um, especially for the legs, it was. I didn't really have it a template mapped out. It was kind of just whatever comes to mind or wherever the beads fall. That's where I'll go with it. Um, and the colors I kind of wanted to uh, more matte colors, kind of uh, flat colors, um, just 
just to try it out because I usually work with colors that have a little bit of a gloss or shine to them. So it's just kind of an opportunity to experiment with the beads. Yeah, right on. Um, and then, yes, at the bottom of the legs, I chose to add wolf willow beads, which I picked at St. Moran last summer. So those were kind of my personal added touch to kind of bring my family and to bring their story into the bag. Um, so we met with Gregory for instruction on our bags every couple of weeks, just kind of a check-in to see how we were doing, and then at the same time to learn what the next step was going to be in, in the process of building the bag. So it was, it was probably the most fair part of the experience was to be able to work with Gregory and for him to cut. He actually showed us his collection as well. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be able to be with him and learn from him. Um, well, the other reason why I also want to make it is because the octopus bag is traditionally worn by men, and I have two sons. So this was a really a, a, a project for me to have something to pass down to them. So I plan on making another one so they can each have, have their own octopus bag. Um, so yeah, I think that's also one of the main reasons why I want to do the project too, because most of the beadwork I've been doing is you know, mostly worn by women and floral designs and things like that that um, you know, my grandma would wear, my mom would wear. Um, but that this is an actual piece that I can I can pass down in my to my kids. <laughs>
Disons plus au sujet de la petite tasse de thé. Using the touchpad, select your language of choice, locate your artifact in the presentation, and tap it. À l'aide de l'écran interactif, choisis votre langue préférée. Trouve l'objet dans la présentation et appuyez dessus. Toy china sets were popular for young girls and were found at many Métis sites. This hand-painted, gold-trimmed version probably belonged to one of the real girls. Les services de vaisselle pour enfants étaient des jouets populaires chez les petites filles et ont été trouvés sur de nombreux sites métis. Cette version peinte à la main avec garniture en or appartenait probablement à l'une des filles réelles. Beyond fiddles and sashes really enriches the museum. Each of the four interactive stations is thoughtfully placed so that it complements the information and artifacts on display. Au-delà des violons et des ceintures, enrichit vraiment le musée. Chaque station interactive est soigneusement placée pour compléter les informations et les artefacts exposés. For example, in this section in the museum about the Northwest Resistance, the station has some curious artifacts about the Battle of Toulon's Coulis. Par exemple, cette partie du musée traite de la résistance de la, du Nord-Ouest. Ainsi, cette station offre quelques artefacts curieux de la bataille à la Coulée des Tourons. Voilà des légumes du jardin à Madame Touron. Ah, these are Madame Touron's vegetables. Although fiddles and sashes are an iconic and well-celebrated part of Métis culture, there is so much more to learn about the past from what people have left behind. Bien que les violons et les ceintures sont emblématiques et bien célébrés de la culture métisse, il y a beaucoup d'autres à découvrir sur le passé à partir de ce que les gens ont laissé derrière eux. These artifacts go beyond fiddles and sashes, as each artifact tells its own story. Each story helps us to personally connect to the people, events, and places of the past. Ces artifacts vont de au-delà des violons et des ceintures, tout comme chaque artifact a sa propre histoire. Chaque histoire nous aide à établir une connexion avec les personnes, les événements, et les lieux du passé. Did you enjoy exploring the exhibit with us? Comment avez-vous trouvé l'exploration de l'exposition? We invite you to come explore and learn more by going beyond fiddles and sashes here at Fratage National Historic Site. Nous vous invitons à venir explorer et apprendre davantage en allant au-delà des violons et des ceintures ici au lieu historique national de Fratage. See you soon. À bientôt. There's always something new at Fratage. We have special demonstration activities every weekend. We have a new interpretive trail, Le Petit Chemin. We have new viewing telescopes and plenty of new exhibits. From all of us here at Batoche on the Carlton Trail and the homeland of the Métis, thank you for watching. Il y a de toujours de nouveau chez Batoche. On a des animations spéciales, démonstrations toutes les fins de semaine, de nouveaux télescopes d'observation, une nouvelle piste d'interprétation. Le petit chemin, que de nouvelles expositions. De nous tous ici à Batoche, sur la patrie des métiers, au revoir.